Good evening from BBC Points West. Our headlines tonight, dump the scales. A campaign to improve treatment for eating disorders. One woman tells us she was refused help for being too heavy. It's appalling. I left the appointment that day and felt like this fake anorexic person who was like a fat anorexic, who was attention seeking, who was making an issue out of nothing. A Bristol woman is calling on the government to make it easier for people with eating disorders to access treatment. Hope Virgo, who had anorexia, says she was denied support after being told she wasn't thin enough. We'll be hearing from her in a moment. But first, Robin Markwell reports on those joining her calls for change. I think about food all the time and it's just a living nightmare. I don't want to think about food. I want to think about a good future. Imogen was diagnosed with bulimia two years ago. Had half banana, some more broccoli and beetroot. She keeps a food diary to remind herself of what she's eaten, but she's struggled to find help. Bulimia has taken over my life. It, I've had to take a break from work because I've had to, well, I have to exercise at least three times a day and I've suffered depression because of this and everything. We, we just need so much more help. Not to just be put on the scales, you know, because um, the scales are like a nightmare to me. That complaint of seeking help only to be weighed and told you don't qualify for support is echoed by others. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who has signed my petition this week. Hope Virgo from Bristol had a similar experience when she was battling anorexia. Now she's launched a petition. 64,000 people have signed. The Bath MP Vera Hophouse has taken Hope's cause to Parliament. She held a debate last month. She has a petition of her own with MPs. We've been overwhelmed, actually, with people coming forward, um, particularly because so many people suffer in silence, and with them, actually, family members and friends as well, because there's a stigma attached to it. And the more people who actually come forward and tell their stories, the more other people will follow and finally share that they have a problem. More than a million people are thought to have eating disorders in the UK. The government says it's committed to offering everyone access to timely treatment as close to home as possible. It added... GPs are trained to identify symptoms and help patients discuss the issues. Rejection for treatment on the grounds of weight and BMI is not in line with any of the published guidance and should not occur. But campaigners insist the guidance isn't being implemented everywhere. They intend to take their petition to Downing Street. As for Imogen, she hopes one day to beat the bulimia. She's begun her own support group in Bath to share her experiences with others. Robin Markwell, BBC Points West. Well, I spoke to Hope Virgo a short while ago and she explained what happened when she was refused treatment. It's appalling. I left the appointment that day and felt like this fake anorexic person who was like a fat anorexic, who was attention seeking, who was making an issue out of nothing. And like I did, I felt just completely at a loss. And I came very close in that four week period after that to ending my life because I didn't know what I was gonna do about it. And I felt just emotionally and physically exhausted that I was having that battle back in my head again. I guess we are in a time when the NHS is stretched. Can you see that doctors have difficult decisions to make and weight might have to be a factor when deciding who to offer treatment to? Yeah, I completely get that and I do understand it. And I think one of the issues is that there's a huge lack of understanding around eating disorders. I think people think of eating disorders as something that is about weight and that you can judge the severity of an eating disorder based on someone's BMI. But actually a lot of the time you will have people struggling, functioning at kind of just over, just in that kind of underweight category whose BMI isn't able to get that support that they need. I think if we invested more and the government invested more and made it a priority of the NHS to actually change this understanding and to get the guidelines implemented properly, it would save a lot of money because people wouldn't end up in hospital being completely completely institutionalised and they could prevent individuals getting to that crisis point. So for you, does it come down to early intervention then, really? I think a huge part of it is that. I also think there's things that GPs can do. So, for example, when I relapsed and got turned away from services, I did go back to my GP and try to work out actually what my GP could do to support me. 
one of the things that they agreed to do was weighing me every couple of weeks so that I would have someone to be accountable to. Yes, it isn't about weight, and I'm not saying that you should be weighing people who've got eating disorders because it is really, really stressful that. But actually, for me, I needed to put on that weight, and I wasn't having anyone supporting me do that. So I think for GPs, there is things that they can do. I also think that it's about kind of changing that whole narrative around eating disorders. And if you go to get a diagnosis and you're unable to get one, not having someone turn you away because of your BMI or saying that you're not thin enough and actually finding other wording around it or finding other services to signpost you to. Okay, Hope, thanks very much for joining us.